Hello, I'm Leo Ryder, Chief Technology Officer for Nimbix. I'm here to talk to you about what we call our Jarvis vaults uh, mechanism. And uh, the long-winded description is uh, heterogeneous on-demand storage for HPC workflows in the cloud. So generally what we're talking about here is just adding you know, to our existing portfolio of cloud services. Uh, we are a cloud provider of bare metal, you know, true HPC systems. We use containers to, uh, to abstract a lot of this. Uh, what we're adding now is in addition to heterogeneous workflows and applications and hardware, we're adding heterogeneous storage as well. And we're giving the user self-service to actually define both physical and logical topology for the storage. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of an eye chart, but we're basically trying to achieve all of this with one large cloud portfolio. So uh, just kind of following the, uh, the IDC recommendations on how we should structure this deck. So now we're getting into how we disrupt the market. And, um, you know, obviously it's all about choice, uh, new possibilities, and future-proofing technology. Um, basically, you know, customers who, uh, uh, it's important for customers to be able to choose in a public cloud environment where it's a multi-tenant and they have different, you know, cost of expectations and requirements, uh, how much they want to pay for storage, how much storage they want, and how fast the storage needs to be. And all these things are, are you know, kind of play key decisions in both topology as well as you know, a physical and logical topology of the storage and the applications are going to run. So we give the customers a choice to decide, to decide this and, you know, some may choose some very high-end, even private storage uh, that's made it to public cloud compute. Others may, may look for lower end, you know, cold storage. And all this is without having to re-architect applications to take advantage of it. Our, our technology actually, you know, translates uh, the different topologies into something that's compatible with whatever application is being run, whether it's a parallel solver or a big data application. Um, obviously, with HPDA, what we're seeing is uh, this convergence of, you know, the, 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 on one hand, you have these large parallel systems uh, with centralized storage. And on the other hand, you have these massively distributed, you know, cheap commodity boxes full of internal hard drives. And um, none of those models are really well positioned to take it, you know, to take HPDA where it needs to go ultimately, which is kind of some combination of that, of high density compute and, and you know, different levels of density for storage. So being able to give this adaptability, you know, it unlocks some of those analytics possibilities. And then of course, you know, we wanted the abstraction layer itself to be very extensible because we just don't know if, you know, tomorrow there's going to be something other than file block and object that's better positioned to handle some of the new applications. So not only can we, you know, talk to different physical topologies within those, within those uh, architectures, but we can also extend the platform to support new architectures, whatever those may be. And then one other disruptive piece here that's not actually on the slide is, of course, it challenges, and I, I pretty much mentioned this implicitly, it challenges assumptions and architecture for different applications. So if you talk to the big data crowd who's, you know, very sort of um, uh, versed on Hadoop, they'll, they'll insist that the only way to do Hadoop, for example, is to fill commodity boxes full of spindles and just do that. Um, so we think that, you know, it's time to look at some of those assumptions and, you know, again, you may want to scale compute and storage separately, and that becomes very difficult when you, when you have that level of integration. And of course, we offset some of the performance and integration challenges by using technologies like InfiniBand and so forth to, to accelerate it. And then as far as the market impact, um, obviously we think it's going to ease, the, you know, speed up the convergence of HPC and, and big data, uh, which we're all, you know, very much looking forward to. Uh, we want to democratize access uh, both to the high performance compute as well as the storage, whether you know some customers um, may be, may, there may be a barrier to entry today uh, because the storage is too expensive or the compute is too expensive or you know some combination of that. So if they can right size the, the, the infrastructure for their needs, um, we think that's going to enable more users, especially in the missing middle that we like to talk about to, to uh, take advantage of this. Um, also, because it's heterogeneous and, and somewhat and actually highly distributed, uh, we can actually allow customers to do things like bring their own storage and plug into a public cloud compute environment in a very seamless way. So customers who, for example, in the energy space, um, you know, we have some customers who actually own their own storage and park it in our data center but use our public cloud for compute. Um, having this secure capability to do so is, is you know, uh, kind of takes down the objection of cloud for some of these customers or at least lets them think about cloud and, you know, rather than just ruling it out categorically. And then, of course, there's use cases that we just don't know about yet, and, you know, we hope to be able to usher those in with, the, with this technology. So, questions? Uh, which 
uh, particular customer groups do you expect to use this technology? Well, we're, we're going to make it available to all of our customers. Um, and, and, you know, for it's non-disruptive to our existing customers who use Parallel already, for example, because it supports Parallel storage as well. Um, but we think that the big growth is going to be in HPDA, uh, you know, high-density compute with accelerators like FPGAs and so forth, which we can enable in our platform uh, together with, you know, data that scales both, both horizontally and vertically. Okay, so um, many people get involved in cloud for price considerations. So what is your range of price like compared to the Amazon cloud sure. or things that might commonly be used? Well, on a per unit basis, it's much more expensive because we're actually selling actual supercomputing uh, capacity. But we don't we sell solutions rather than capacity. So instead of buying, you know, uh, buying like a utility, you buy it as a solution cost. And when you look at you know, things get solved six to ten times faster, let's say, on a, on a given problem because we can use InfiniBand and RDMA for, you know, for a parallel solver, which you can't do on an AWS. Um, the total cost of the solution is actually lower uh, when you look at it as the actual, you know, how, how much did it cost to solve that problem. So the customers who come to us, they're coming to us for, for agility and, and ease of use more so than just absolute, you know, uh, lowest bargain basement utility price. So we're, we're actually raising prices rather than lowering them like some of the big kind of utility commodity cloud providers, right? Great, thanks a lot. Sure.